How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and also to another tech news video where I go over all of the latest news that happen in the tech world. Keep guys up to a date every Monday, Wednesday and Friday now. We're gonna push for that. So I do hope you guys enjoy it. If you do like these videos, let me know down in the comments below and also give it a like, give it a subscribe, all of that jazz. But anyway, let's start off with our first topic. So just the other day, we talked about the 13th generation 13900K Raptor Lake that has already been leaked for release later this year. Well, and now Intel has confirmed in their investors a meeting for 2022 that Arrow Lake will succeed Meteor Lake as a client product. Now, Meteor Lake will be the 14th generation CPUs for 2023, and Arrow Lake is a plan to be marketed as Intel's 15th generation of CPUs. Now, of course, they do need to prepare way in, in advance for their generation, so of course, we won't see these anytime soon but we are at least getting some information out on those now although arrow lake will most likely use the same platform as a meteor like cpus arrow lake will be utilized in a three processor nodes namely intel 4 intel 20a and then also external in a three technology not exactly sure what all of this means but now lunar lake which will be the 16th generation launches in a 2024 plus so we'll most likely see it around like 2025 but it's also been confirmed that it will utilize intel's 18a and also an unnamed external technology so no idea on that just yet but at least we are getting some information for our future cpus are coming out and the 13th generation for the uh, i9 3900k does look quite promising uh, bumping up the cores uh, quite a bit uh, compared to the 12th generation and those ones already impressed me quite a bit and then next up, yesterday, the embargo for the AMD 6000 series of mobile CPUs was lifted. Now, unfortunately, we weren't able to get our hands on a laptop to review them, but we can quickly dive into some of the changes. The main thing that has changed is the power consumption. Although you still get the 15, the 28, and 45 watt power draws, the performance per watt has improved. The 6800U maxes out at a 4.7 gigahertz from the 4.4 gigahertz, and the H series now hits a 5 gigahertz up from the 4.8 gigahertz. The 35 watt HS CPUs now have higher base clocks as well, improved by up to 10%, while the U series gets an up to 40% a bump. We'll see how those perform. AMD claims an array of specs on where and how exactly each thing now saves a battery life and claims a 24 hour battery life. But of course, we know that's not going to be a real world case it's usually not and if you want to know a bit more there are a bunch of reviews already out so definitely go check those out and then uh, next up we all know the delorean which is one of the most famous cars ever built and also featured in the movie back to the future well we got a little bit of a tease when delorean tweeted a video of what appears to be an electric version of the car. Now in the tweet, it's only a silhouette of a car and a slogan that said, the future was never a promise. Now they also used the hashtags, hashtag DeLorean Evolved and also hashtag Electronic Vehicle. Now just remember that the company behind the tease is not the same company that made the original DeLorean back in the 1970s and 1980s. In 1995, some of the company, including its logo and remaining parts inventory was actually purchased by Stephen Wayne and a move to Texas where it is now operated as a DMSC Texas. Now we'll see what happens there. It's probably going to be a very limited production on some of the cars. So it's probably already sold out <laughs> anyway. That's usually how it goes for these like more limited design cars. So well, we'll, we'll see. And then next up, we all use our phones quite a lot except for me or one also put it in there because he knows i'm not on my phone that much but now charging is a big factor for us the quicker it charges the faster we can use it again well now red magic has your back with the red magic 7 and 7 pro unveiling with a 135 watt charging speed now the pro model charges at 135 watts and the 5000 milliamp hour battery charges 100 in just 15 minutes it also features a fan for 
temperature cooling from the insane uh, fast uh, charging. The standard phone has a measly 120 watt charging that fills up uh, the 4,500 milliamp hour battery in uh, 17 uh, minutes. Some of the other specs that you get for the phone is a 6.8 inch AMOLED uh, screen with a resolution of a 1080 by 2400 resolution running at 120 hertz. It also has uh, the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. The standard phone has 8 gigs of RAM whereas the Pro version has a uh, 12 gigs of RAM and a uh, pricing starts at $630 for the vanilla phone and a $740 for the Pro version which is actually not bad. Now another cool thing is that the 165 watt charger can also charge your laptop. So we are getting close enough where you can actually charge a bigger boy like this which uses 220 watts. So we're getting close to where you can use a small little charger to actually charge it. I'm really looking forward to that because then you don't need to carry around the massive charging brick anymore. And then next up, for those of you who have iPhones, I really hope that you're happy with the iOS 15.3.1 because Apple has already stopped the downgrade option to go back to the 15.3 version. Now, this is something that usually happens, but this time, instead of taking a month or so, it now happened within a week's time. So either Apple is very confident that there will be no bugs encountered on their latest version, or they just don't care that much. And then next up, Battlefield 2042, which we talk a lot, a lot because there's always problems. And this time it's again. Apparently it's a bad because Halo was a polished. So this is what EA's COO said in a 20 minute internal town hall talent meeting. She stated that because Halo was a polished, the community expected 2042 to be as well, which is so unreasonable to actually <laughs> expect a game to be polished. She blamed other things too, like the pandemic and the staff working from home. But also from what I've heard, Halo wasn't entirely polished either. It definitely wasn't as bad, but it did have some kinks here and there. Now, on the EA, should just man up and uh, put the blame on themselves because they made a bad game full of uh, bugs and glitches and other games did not. They're not to blame. And especially for 200,000 people wanting their money back, the game is just dead. They mentioned a while back that they're planning to maybe make it a free-to-play game. If they do that, then awesome. Then nobody really can complain, except for the people who actually bought the damn game. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just no going back, really. And this is nothing new from EA. We kind of expected something like this, so not surprised. And then next up, talking about stuff that's dead. Unfortunately, Crucial Ballistic Memory is also dead now. Now, Micron gave no explanations to a why. They only stated that it will intensify its focus on developing a Micron's DDR5 client and server products roadmap, along with the expansion of the Crucial Memory and a storage product portfolio. A PC gamer speculated it could be related to crucial memory only running a micron a memory IC, which doesn't clock as high as some of the competitors. Now, this would make it impossible to create ballistic memory that reaches the crazy 6,000 plus megahertz of a DDR5, especially with some of the arrivals enthusiast level of kits. Now, it's kind of sad to see an old legend like this go, but luckily there are some other options that you can still get. And then lastly, it seems like we won't be seeing the Intel Arc GPUs as soon as expected. We commented a while back that the GPUs are rumored to be pushed back to Q2 of 2022 because of driver issues. Well, at this year's investors meeting, Intel said its Arc GPUs would roll out in stages in the coming months. The first stage will be for laptops, which is planned for the end of March, Yes, and then also the desktop of GPUs are expected as sometime in the second quarter. Now, while we might not see a workstation variant until the second half of this year, the Battle Mage and Celestial GPUs, which are the high-end and enthusiast GPUs, have been confirmed, but they are only expected to come in a 2023 or 2024. Four. They will be in the same range as the 3090Ti and RX 6900XT, but by that time, depending on how long it takes, they could already be out of date. Well, we'll see. But anyway, that's pretty much it for our tech news. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. Also, if you want to see any of the topics, they are linked in the description below, which takes you to our website with everything out there. Now, I do hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will check all of you next week. I do hope you guys have a lovely weekend. Cheers, guys. Oh, oh.